It's going to be another hot day. Even though it's early, my room already feels like an oven. There are no windows because safety must be key. No one can know I'm hiding inside here. And because it's the apocalypse, there's no air conditioning, no ceiling fan, no nothing. I have a paper fan that Claudia brought me, and I pick it up and wave it over my face in the darkness, creating a breeze. I can light some candles or maybe use one of my lanterns, but that gives off heat too. And sometimes it's cooler to just sit here in the darkness and wait, and wait, and wait. What I'm waiting for, I don't exactly know. A change in this life, a rescue, a prince on horseback. Silliness, I know. But when your life is as stagnant as mine, you indulge in the fantasy, because the fantasy is all that you've got. I remember all the fairy tale movies from when I was a child. They all involved a plucky singing heroine who fought through troublesome times to get her man. Maybe that's my problem. I can't really sing. Well, that and I'm not very plucky. And I can't fight at all with my bad leg. So I'm zero for three in regard to being princess material. Doesn't matter. I don't want to rule over a kingdom. I'm not very social in the thought of balls and soirees. If they even exist anymore, seems a little hellish. But I'd love to have a prince. I close my eyes in the darkness, fan myself, and dream. My ideal prince would be tall dark-haired with gorgeous blue eyes that pierce the soul. He'd be strong enough to carry me wherever I need to go, since my bad leg doesn't allow me to do much for long. And he'd be gentle, so, so gentle. He'd pick me flowers and read me poetry, and we'd spend endless days in the shade of a tree on a blanket, gazing up at fluffy clouds while holding hands. He'd beg me for a kiss and I'd be shy, but of course I'd comply. I touch my lips just thinking about such things. My prince would be sweet and kind and adoring, and I'd never be lonely again. He'd hold me close and brush my hair back from my face and then whisper sweet nothings in my ear. I'm the most incredible woman he's ever met. He wants to write me songs and... There's a hard knock on the door to my room. Amy, you up? It's my sister. I'm awake. I don't get up from the bed. Just keep fanning myself. Claudia opens the door a crack. Not too much because my scent is dangerous. Morning, sleepyhead. She gives me an affectionate smile. We've got a couple of cool hours before it gets too hot. Want to come up and have breakfast? I feel a stab of resentment for my sister, with her bright red curling hair that's so clean and fresh and not plastered to her face with sweat. She's lightly freckled from spending her days in the sun, and her hand rests on the pregnant bulge of her belly. She's so happy, and I'm so... not. Of course, then I feel guilty. Claudia is doing the best she can. It's not her fault I'm miserable. I sit up in bed and give her a happy smile I hope looks sincere. Sure. Great, I'll put on some coffee. See you in a bit. She closes the door again, and then I'm alone in the dark.